Hey guys, welcome to another lesson of Pro Teachers Noob. Today I have with me Ingrid. Hello. And today we're going something over and going over something I once did with Tristan a while back, but that was more of a discussion about it, and she had read it, so it wasn't a Pro Teachers Noob or anything. But we're going over Jeff Johns and Gary Frank's creator-owned book, Geiger. Ooh. And just look at that cover right there. That that definitely leaves quite the impression. Do you see the face? Yes, I do. That was one of the first things I noticed about it. <laughs> yep. And the guy in the middle looks almost like the, the mouse, doesn't he? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, where, where else would the mouse be, right? It's very evocative. Yep. Well, let's just dive right in. Yep. Levels are spiked. Meaning this is an optimal breeding ground for all the nasties. Between the night crawls and the organ people, we best take shifts. You can get some shut eye first if that's what you need. Not sure I can sleep. Too curious to tell the truth. Curious about what? About the man, the one who walks outside without a suit? They say back in the day you could spot him around here all night, all lit up. Is as true as the air is death. After the unknown war, People started seeing him flickering out there on the horizon like a candle. Who was he? Oh, he was called a lot of things. Joe Glow, the man of math destruction, the walking bomb, the meltdown, ma meltdown man. That came later. I'd like to hear his story if you know it. Well, okay. Down the tail will keep us awake at least. His name was Tarek Geiger, and everything he did, good or bad, was for family. Well, that's a great start. Yep. The president it feels very natural. It does. The president declared he would not fire unless fired upon. But this revolt is unprecedented. Sad news from Indiana. Now, Moray Muddy Davis, the Vietnam veteran and reclusive cartoonist who created the beloved Junkyard Joe strip, has died at the age of 77. Scandal outside the Pentagon as declassified files of the 1997 Widows bombing reveals an explosive tale of an American hero. The unexplainable metal monolith found at the site of the skirmish at Island Mount began vibrating earlier today. Mark Hurst and Mark's her second book on strange hauntings in the White House. Despite being dubbed a work of fiction by officials, the author once again finds herself the subject of an FBI in in investigation. Interrupt, but we're being told tracking systems have triggered incoming alerts across the country. After months of global violence, it's an unknown who had just started this war. Let's go! Now, Tracy! Boulder City, Nevada. Air filters, hydrophonics, we can live down there for as long as we need to, okay? We're prepared. But your medicine, Tarek, I've got plenty. For now, you do, but not forever. We can't stay, and you stay down there. We've got no choice. I'm scared, Daddy. I know, baby. But I'm never going to let anything hurt you. Dad, what's Molly barking at? Arf, arf! Arf, arf! Uh-oh. Oh, no! What's happening? I'll be right back. Come on, Molly. Mom, don't worry. He's got her. Ah! Tarek! Sorry, neighbors, but we're taking ch uh, ch uh, but we're taking that shelter. Probably his people that started it. If you didn't notice with Tarek, he definitely looks Middle Eastern. I'm, I mean, I kind of assumed something along those lines, given the choice of name. Yep. Like, Tracy, shut the door. I can't. Lock it and do not open it for anything. Do you understand? Do it now. Arf, arf! I love you. I love you, too. Dad, wait. Don't leave us. Dad. They've closed it. And that dog won't shut up. Arf, 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 blam! You get on your feet and tell him to open that door. Not happening. You do it or you die. I'll do anything to protect my family. Okay. <sighs> well, they're dead. Yep, that is extremely, extremely dead. Really? What asshole? Then they shot the dog. Yeah, no. If somebody shot trouble, I'm fairly certain I would want to metaphorically go nuclear on them because at that point, just. They deserve why? to die for that. It's like, why would you do that? 20 years later, we shouldn't be in Boulder City. Resources are running out. People are worried. The king tells us to go. We go. But there's a reason no one comes here. This place ain't safe. Oh, hold on. Well, I just think. 
It's okay. I was seeing trouble being cute. Ah, uh, what's he doing? He's just sitting like a little loaf on my desk. Ah, uh, but yeah, basically these guys are coming in trying to find stuff. Uh, look at there. Look at look at nothing. You see, it's empty. Hey, I found something. What is it? Whoa! <coughs> no one ever mentions anything like this. What if it's the organ people? They ain't disorganized. What do you think's inside? Hopefully enough to pay the king's taxes. Gentlemen, you're trespassing. This guy's got no suit on. I've had garbage collectors like yourselves come around now and again, trying to get past my property line. The ones that didn't get off my land when I asked ended up under it. It's uh, it's uh, it's how I got all these cars. That's him, isn't it? That's the glowing man. He ain't glowing, and he sure as hell ain't no 15 feet tall. You wanted uh, us to stay out? You should have put up a sign. A sign. And what would it say? Keep out or you lose your teeth? Ah! <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. I'll put up a sign. In neon! No oh, trespassing! Oh, wow. That yeah. is a really good lighting effect. Boo! Go, go, go! Have a nice day. What do you mean, where are they? Earth? They ran. It's better that way. For them and us. Bury too many people out here already. There's a Dr. Molotov. Dinner time, yeah. Oh, oh, look at that. Three out of, you know, yeah, two at a dog. Oh, boy. I'll pop a can of bean as long as you you sleep outside. All right. So what'll it be tonight? Moby Dick again? Kiss before dying? Play and palace walk? Junkyard Joe? Yeah, I know. I'm bored of them all. All too. What I wouldn't give for a new book. But nobody writes anymore. He's a bunch of beans, of course. Ah. I said 20 years. I know you can't hear me. Dad, 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 dad. But I'm here until it's safe to open the door. And we can be a family again. It's Geiger. Oh, boy. Protecting his family. There, and there have been stories about him since you were a child, my king. Safari Bob claimed to have met him once. He made a pact with the radioactive man to keep out of Boulder City. We listened, but that was when supplies weren't so scarce. We saw that it was only a story to scare people off. But three of our men just encountered someone walking outside without a suit. Sir, can I stand up? It's been an hour. Hmm, yes, one second. I have broader shoulders and make the dragon bigger. Much bigger. In fact, oh, just start over. It's all wrong anyway. And if you don't do it right this time, I'm going to have you fed to the hungry beast below, do you understand? She'll gobble you right up. Sir, if Safari finds that Bob finds out we've broken his laws. His laws? Oh, Safari Bob and his laws don't concern me. Gather the nuclear knife. I want to find this myth of a man. You can't come with us. It's too dangerous. You never questioned my father when you served him, so you don't question me! This, this is an opportunity, Warhead, to finally slay something. What fun it will be. I'll show all the other bosses that I am uh, my father's son. No, I'm more. I'll bring back the glowing man's head, and I'll prove that I am more powerful than, I, than my father ever was. This is my chance for vindication. This is my chance for glory! And you want to know where he is? You want oh, to know where boy. Is? Do you want to know? Oh, boy, I'm super curious. Las Vegas! You know what? That does not surprise me at all. I'm coming for you, glowing man! Why, because it was in Nevada? Hmm. I don't know, it just... Now, look at this, though. We soon start to see Safari Bob, Nero, Milky Way, craziest of them all, Goldbeard, the Cirque, the Force, Karloff, Oregon People Alliances, the King... The princess king. What happened to the old king? Where's the queen? Bonnie Borden. Smart. Dangerous. So these are all the bosses of Vegas. Ah, interesting. And they each rule different sections of them. That makes sense. Reveal the decadent world of the Las Vegas crime lords. 
witness the desperate lives of those who survived the apocalypse. Behold, what passes for a chew toy in the nuclear wastelands. Oh, Junkyard Joe, how come we're always last? Ah, another record! Muddy Bumbles, why did that 10-minute course take you an hour? I got a rock in my boot, Sarge, and I got mud in my eyes. You think the enemy's going to care about that? You boys need to be more like Joe. He's a perfect soldier. But Joe's a robot. Of course he's a robot. That's the point. Sarge is right. There's got to be some way we can be more like Joe. Hey, I've got an idea. Bottoms up. Burp, 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 burp. Ingrid? <laughs> I was gonna say, I was, I was expecting a laugh from you on that one. Sorry, spaced out a little bit there, but yes, that is very funny. Bottoms up, and the other guy's like, "Uh, really, dude?" <laughs> yeah, no, that'll give you enough calories for the rest of your life, man. <laughs> the wrong kind. Yes. Oh, look at that cover. That is really good. Some time has passed since we last met. The cancer is progressing faster than we like, Tarek. We're going to, and, and we're going to get more aggressive with treatment, but I'm not sure what else we can do. They say it was the sickness that saved Tarek Geiger. That when the bombs went off and he got stuck outside, all the poison was bottled up, burning deep in his broken heart like a furnace. How long do I have left? Forever. Uh, and others say it wasn't the radiation that kept Geiger's heart beating. It was his family. Did he ever get out of that sh get get him out of that shelter? You'll s hear about that soon enough. But first, let me tell you a story about Las Vegas and the people, the poor people, was in it. Then we'll get back to the glowing man. Woo woo! I can't believe we got it. We turn we turn this over to the king, and we got all the chips we need. More than chips, baby. We get a tower. We get seats at the court. We'll be Duke and Duchess of Camelot. Hey. You see that? See what? I thought I saw a light. I see a light, all right. Vegas, baby! Cleansing complete. So they basically get, you know, um, not mm -hmm. detox, but you know what I mean, right? Oh, look at this. They're actually wearing their suits and dress underneath it all. <laughs> Enjoy your stay. Oh, we will. Let's get go get rich. And the king's men return from Boulder City. So basically... We're, and we're, and this is after he's gone after the glowing man, but, and we're going to see the aftermath, but then we'll find out what happened next issue. Oh, boy. Here you go, Carolina. You tell Haz I made it extra seat like he likes it. I will. Thanks. Hey, why so blue? Haley turned 16 in two months. I'm hoping she doesn't get assigned to the Dragon Club. She's growing up so fast. Shave her head. Make her ugly somehow. You do that, and she'll, maybe she'll get put in the kitchen. And I'd be more worried about your little boy come his turn. Ooh. Hmm. And uh, again, what do you think about Gary Frank's artwork here? Very traditional, but very good, isn't it? It's very, very expressive and evocative. But again, traditional. Yeah. I need to talk to the, the Haz Warhead. He's in the middle of a roll right now. Hard sex. Excuse me, Haz. Joe made your drink sweet like you like it. Is everyone going to interrupt my game? Leave the drink and beat it, Carolina. We found the prize, Haz. Where? Oregon people out east scavenged it from Air Force One. They didn't know what it was. We do. Traded it a heart for it. Huh. You see? This mess of paper and wires and metal is supposed to be something? Go get the text. Bring them down here to verify this isn't a fake like the others. Yes, sir. It's no fake. You'll see. It's the King's Holy Grail. Holy grail, my ass. Hard eight. Hazmat does it again. And junkyard go to the rescue. It, it, basically, the kids are then there, and the mom comes back like, we're leaving. Leaving. Where? Outside. Outside? We can't go outside. I was waiting for an opportunity. I didn't want to scare you. But this, I think maybe this can pay our way in. What can? Into where? Safety, Hallie. Freedom. This is our chance to find it. What's in the bag, mob? It's relic from before the Unknown War. It's called the nuclear football. The king's been after it for years. What are you talking about? Listen to me. We have to get to Norad. It's 80 miles south of Denver in the China Mountains. It's the only place left where the American government still has control. It's where we need to go. But 
This is a car to activate the elevator. And these keys are to a vehicle in the garage. We get to the garage, get suits from the clean zone, and we can be and we can leave right now. We have to leave right now. But I don't want to go outside. <laughs> oh no. Mom, you get under here and don't come out. But mom, go. Stay hidden. Has, what's going on? Where is it? Where's what? The bag. We got cameras and eyes on you. You talk when you I tell you to, Warhead. Yes, sir. Her place isn't and her place isn't that that bad big. We can look for it ourselves. Uh oh. Mom! And they squirt him with soap in his eyes. Run, Henry! Mom! You kids get back here! You ding! This is too big. Do I have to do everything for you? Resizing. Do you know how to drive? I've watched a lot of videos. Which car is it? Boop, boop. I'm scared. Me too. Vroom. Do you think they'll come after us? Haley? I don't know. How long is it going to take to get there? I don't know. Do we have enough food and water? I don't know. Now shut up and I'm trying to drive. I'm sorry, Henry. Henry? They killed Bob. I know. What are we going to do now? Oh, dear. Oh, bugs! Big bugs! Hold on! Come on! The bag! Forget the bag! Mom said we need it! <laughs> Haley, who is that? You shouldn't be outside. Get home before their big ones show up. Ah! There before, and there before you go. And there, so before you go, you have any good books on you? <laughs> How could you lose these children? We got a party after them right now. I want my holy grail. We'll get it back. It's out there where he is. I can't face him alone. I can barely face anyone after what the glowing man did to me out there. Bring me my mask! Jesus! Oh, wow. Now think back to how we looked before. That is that is one big dramatic difference. And escort me to the Manhattan. Miss Broden, where is she? Welcome to the city, kid. My men say you have a proposition for me. Make it snappy. I've got things to do. So we find a bit about his about his um his cancer. Record fever spikes to 120, but he's still conscious and lucid. Not possible. His organs aren't shutting down. They're changing into something else. The making of a monster. The hero defeated. His secret revealed. The form of... So basically we find a bit more about his um, radiation and all the treatments. But it feels like it's not doing much. But at the same time, it's weird. They don't understand it at all. Hmm. All right. Henry, it's him. The glowing man. The name's Geiger. I like how you still see his eyes. But it's yeah. like there's one of the stick, only one stick out. Uh -huh. I thought he'd be taller. He looks pretty tall to me. I'm Haley. This is my brother, Henry. Thank you for saving us from these things. Nightcrawlers. We need to go. There, these are scouts, but there will be soldiers not far behind. What is he? Please don't stare, kid. It isn't polite. But how do you do that? And how come you don't have to wear a suit out here? Get back in your car and go home. We can't. We're from Las Vegas, but our mom. Happy birthday, Henry. She was trying to get us somewhere safe. The King's men. The Knights. What did they do? They killed mom. What a family trip this is going to be. Sure is. One for the ages. Oh. The night after the King's scavengers encountered Geiger. Hmm. You okay in there, hun? Sleep, kids. Shoot him! <laughs> uh, we can't go home. Car won't start. I don't want to stay out here. I hate it out here. Don't let him move. He's got those rods in his back. He takes them out. He'll light up like a slot machine. But you bet you regret kicking me in the teeth now, you freak. We're back, and we're good. We're back to take everything you got. Oh no! Everything the monster has belongs to me, including his head. He's got a whole arsenal in here, King. Yes, yes, more guns. Load them all up, of course. But where is the creature I've come to slay? I'll put his glowing corpse in the casino for all the and to believe in my greatness. He's here. Where? Right here. 
Him? No. That can't be the miss. He's nothing special. He's not wearing a suit. You have to be joking. This is the horrible glowing man who's been attacking my scavengers, the one everyone in Vegas has nightmares about? The stories are a bit tall, aren't they? Well then, hold him and keep his neck long. It might take a few swings. Look at this. What is it? A bunker. Wonder what he's got stash in there. Stay away from there! The monster talks. Now I'm curious. Blow it open. No, no, please. Take the guns. Take them all. We will. And whatever you have hiding in there. No! <laughs> Tracy? Kids? There's nothing inside. Nothing and worse anything. Just a bunch of skeletons. Oh, boy. Shut the door. Lock it, dude. Not open it for anything. Do you understand? There was, that was the moment Geiger finally faced the truth. We love you. You'll touch everything you touch now, Tarek, but I can help you. The vest will contain the radioactivity, provided the rods stay fastened. Only remove them in emergencies. You build up too much power without the rod secured, and everything you have inside of you will explode. Well, whoever they were, it seems they've been dead since the big bomb hit. Oh, oh, wait. <laughs> Did you know them? You must have, because you built a wall around this shelter. And I assumed you scavenged weapons from everyone you ran in out in here to protect them. <laughs> but you've been protecting a grave. <laughs> you poor, <laughs> you poor idiot. The horrible glowing man. What a fool you are. <laughs> oh, shit. See? That set him off. And with uh, help from the dog. Don't let him get near me. He won't. Ah, no. Oh, no. You took hope from me. If you, you hurt me, I'll have you skin alive, do you understand? Disemboweled. <sharp inhale> I have nothing now. N no. <sharp inhale> now, I've got nothing to offer you, so stop following me. But we have no car. We have nowhere to go. And we have that in common. Bye. It's the king's men. Oh, no. Look what we've got here. Those two thieves and the glowing man himself. You all got quite a price on your head. Let's collect it, boys. Wow. You said your mother was trying to get you someplace safe. Let me see the map. Now, I say this. If he didn't lose his family, he would have left the kids to fend for themselves. Hmm. Do you have that feeling? Because he would have thought his family were still alive in there. Huh. I think his yeah. mind changed after he found out the truth, but what a twist, huh? Yeah. The bunker wasn't as secured as they thought. Mm-hmm. That's heartbreaking, isn't it? That's just rough. And why are you helping me? I lost my family in the war, Tarek. I want to help you protect yours. What is this place? Temporary stop for the night. Remember, hood's back on after you eat. I don't trust the filters in this dump. Pot six, far eight, far end. Take your brother. I'll get the food. Where will you sleep, Tarek? I don't see much. You sleep. I'll keep watch. Why doesn't your do ain't dog have a name? He's not a dog. He's a wolf. And he's called Barney. Barney? You named your two-ended wolf Barney? What's wrong with Barney? Nothing. It's cool. What? He looked like a Barney. He was small when I found him, and cute. <laughs> he looked like a party! <laughs> mm, how come you don't need to wear a suit like everyone else? It's a long story. It's a long drive. It was an accident. Uh, help! Somebody, please! Ah! The cancer therapy was already changing your body, but the fallout... Dan, 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 dan. You were carrying the weight of it with you. And if we do not do something, Tarek, your eruption, eruption will become more violent. They will destroy everything around you. Uh, but I have a solution to keep the energy within dampened. These rods will stabilize your internal temperature. What are they? Bo and boron. What kind of accident? The kind you don't walk away from. You're still walking. Provably speaking. Oh boy, the organ people. Yum, yum, yum. Why is this lift so low? He had a service last week. 
I want to know by whom. I want their name. And then I want them to pick a family member to cook and feed to the beast below. If the elevator isn't fixed after that, they'll have to pick another one. Every second we lace, those children get further away. Oh, my king. I seen the beast has eaten. The queen has requested seconds. She is the beast, not the queen. Say it. The beast. I can smell her from here. Hello, mother. Ugh. I have good news. The nuclear football is within my grasp. Soon I'll have control over all the nukes left after on the continent. All I need to know from you, dear mother, is where her father hid the launch coats. Tell me where they are, and this time I will bring you back upstairs. <laughs> you ugly little scab! Look at what the glowing man did to you! You know why I keep you down here? Because I want you to suffer. Suffer for letting me suffer at the hands of father. Close that right now, Jeremy! I will ask one last time, mother, where did father put the codes? And if you notice, he looks a bit like Trump here. Hmm. A bit, not identical. Chink, chink, chink. You believe that little twerp, Mr. Borden? I can't believe anything that child's saying, Goldbeard, but his father were a senator before the war. That don't mean nothing. It means he may have the launch co and made code that can launch any nuke still left once the slobs in the silos have been are found. And these children have something that's going to tell us where they are. And he help and we help the king find them. We get missiles of our own to play with. And what's Safari Bob going to say, and, and say to us going behind his back, eh? Who's going to tell them? Now come on, sport. You're always complaining about how low you are on the food chain. I've got my chopper squared. Uh, gather your pirates. My mom told us stories about what it was like before the war. She said her parents would take her to a playground every Saturday. They would sit in the sun and eat ice cream. She said there was a breeze. I always wondered what a breeze was like. It's nice. Who are they? The Oregon people. After the bomb, some people refuse to wear suits. Their inbred bodies and minds are riddled with tumors. So they spend their time hunting for donors. Whatever they take that their surgeons don't stitch inside them, they eat. Yum, yum. Like, Haley, yum. Ah, Henry, let go. Arr. I need you to take the wheel. What? Now, Haley. You got it? I think so. Better be sure. Okay, I'm sure. Be right back. Oh, what's he doing? Being crazy. Hi. Oh, just look at this, right? Wow. Look, he's so hot, the knife does nothing. Mm-hmm. I don't see him. Is he okay? I'm going to go look. Haley, stay in the car and lock the doors. Don't leave me here. Ah, Haley! <laughs> Howdy, miss. You lost? So, yeah. Geiger's family was locked inside the shelter while he was caught in the fallout. Somehow, whether it was because of the experimental cancer treatment he had undergone or his will to survive, he was turned into a human glow stick. He spent the next year, 20 years protecting his family from scavengers, hoping one day the air would be clean enough he could let them out. But the king of Las Vegas led his nuclear you know, knights on in an attack. The knights blew open the shelter, and Geiger was faced with the horrible truce. His family had been dead for years. The shelter caved in by the bombs and that started the unknown war. He'd been, been protecting a grave, and it nearly drove him mad. So out, there was nowhere else to go. We left there until he met the two children. And someplace safe. Where was that? The last holdout of the United States. It was called NORAD. Geiger agreed to take them there. But things didn't go as planned. Ooh! Oh, boy! <laughs> Good dog. Moby Dick. <laughs> what are we doing? What are you doing out all the way out here? The people on the cars and bikes tried to get us. You don't need to worry about them now, son. What's in the bag? It's a football. Henry, wait, we don't know these people. But Mom said it belongs to them. General, our mom found it. We don't know where it's from, but everyone wants it. Yeah, they do, kid. We need to get this back to base. Hey, let go. Don't you worry, kid. We're the good guy. Wait, our friend is down there. Yeah, Barty. We got him. 
Look, and look, that smoke. Stop there. Where's the glowing man? Why won't you answer me? Because you smashed the skull in. You do realize most of these scabs don't even talk. Look at that one. It's got three eyes. Bah! When we find those children, absolute power will be in my hand. Mr. Karloff, Milky Way, even Safari Bob himself will bow before me. Gold ain't beard ain't doing no bowing, kid. That's the deal. We carve up Vegas up and we rule it together. And you get the glowing man to stuff and mount. Sir, we found something. Excellent. I'm having the chills again. It's your nerves. Everything's going to be okay now. This is good, Henry. We're safe. But where's Tarnrek and Barney? I like Barney. And uh, deca de 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 decontamination progress and all that. The nuclear football went missing years ago. When Air Force One went down, how did these children come into possession of it? They said their mother gave it to them, Mr. Vice President. When Air Force One went down, it was scavenged. The football was lost. We saw best case destroyed. Yet we verified this is what's left. It contains the sites of every nuclear warhead in America. So we can re re reload and we can locate the silos that have remained hidden and take back control of our nuclear arsenal. The South, the Great Lakes, they'll have no choice but to unite under President Griffin again. The children are on their way to get, uh, get their physicals. And then they'll be integrated. They'll be happy here. What about this man, General? The one with the children? We thought he was one of the Oregon people, but there's no sign of malignant growth anywhere. He's not an air breather. He's something else. These readings are unreal. Rats are 100 times higher than Oregon people. How is this possible? I don't know, but it's fascinating. For some reason, this man is capable of breathing in the air without any adverse signs of radiation exposure. There's, and there's nothing wrong with him. Nothing. Oh, what are these? And right down here at the school, your school, I win. Who's next? Oh, hi, you're new. It's nice to have new people here. I'm Rick. Haley. What are those kids doing in there? They're playing, and they're playing, Henry, between classes. Classes on what? Oh, lots of things. So, yeah, they're basically meeting Rick and all that. Nice kid. Um, good luck. Oh, he's crossing his fingers. Oh, boy. Like, for hope, like. Oh, fair. These things are really in there. Ah, what are they? They look like nice sticks, but what do you think they do? Chum! I don't think we should have taken those out. Good observation. <laughs> hello? Oh, hello there. It's lunchtime. Can I see my brother? As soon as his tests are done, of course you can see him. It's been a long time. We're just waiting for the results. Now you go ahead and eat something. Wow. Hmm. So yeah, this is heaven for them. I, I don't blame them. Quiet, Mutt. I'm trying to read. That a good book? I like it. Oh, Come on, boy. And then he takes the book! <laughs> Can you blame him? Nope. We've got the ki they've got the kids here. Time to go. The girl's healthy, but the boy is sick. Leukemia. Oh, no. The cancer is in its early stages, but you know the law. Yes, I know the law. Hello? Hello in there. I um, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for helping us. I'll talk to his sister. And for God's sake, get him some dessert. Okay, I like this. They're being human. They are. She doesn't like this. It's like, you know the laws. It's like, they don't want, they understand, they don't want to do this, but they have no choice. Mm-hmm. And I love that. For God's sake, get him some dessert. Where's Henry? He's safe, Haley, but he's sick. Sick? Has your brother ever been experiencing any kind of fatigue or discomfort? Well, yeah, but I thought he was just complaining. He never wants to help do anything. He's just a little kid. He has acute le lymphomic leukemia. What? Can you help him? Oh, Haley, I wish we could, but our resources aren't endless. As much as we do, do to generate food and power and clean water, we just don't have enough for everyone. What are you saying? That we can't stay here because he's sick? You can stay, my dear, and we need you to because we still have lots of questions about what you and your brother found. I'm afraid your brother cannot be integrated back into America. But if you kick him out of here, I'm going to. We wouldn't be so cruel as to leave him in the, with the nightcrawlers or worse, the Oregon people. 
We're not monsters, Haley. We have a compassionate life-ending program here. He will have a peaceful passing, I assure you. No! Henry! Henry! What is it? Barty? Ah! This is a good place. It's your home now. No! Let go! Rawr! I hope the woman ran off because she wouldn't deserve to be attacked. Mm. What happened? Where's Henry? They said he was sick. What? They said they were going to kill him. That won't happen. President Griffin has made contact and has approved the missiles to locate and the mission to, to locate the silos. We can. Mr. Vice President, we have a problem with the children's guardian. We don't tolerate violence here. It's been a while, but send our best soldier to take care of this. Bring the robot online. Joe! Ah! America has always been at war. And in every war, there are men and women risen up to fight for their freedom and their families. Some of these heroes are known, but some of them aren't. They are called the unnamed, the Re uh, Revolutionary War, the immortal, the historian, the monster, the robot, the widow. Will you finish the story you're already telling? What happened to Geiger and those kids? Did they get out of that freaky bunker or what? I'm just, I'm getting to that. Just let me finish my grand intro. The Unseen War, the Ghost, and back to the end, which is our beginning. The un the Unseen War, the, the Unknown War, the Glowing Man. To remind you, the year was 2050, the 13th of June to be exact. Nearly 20 years to the day. Basically, yeah, we get another summary again. All right, NORAD, this is delicious. Thank you. I never had so much ice cream before. Do you want strawberry? My mom said strawberry was her favorite when she was a kid. She said there were all kinds of flavors. What's your favorite? Hello? Hello in there? Da! Ah! Henry? Henry, are you okay? I'm fine. I'm eating a sundae. Why Tarek do that? What's going on, Haley? I'm, I'm so sorry. About what? You've always been telling tired, and I'm always telling you to stop complaining, but I, I just thought you were just being a kid. I, I didn't know. Know what? You're sick, Henry. You're sick, and these people... They won't let the sick stay here. I, I don't under I don't want to be sick. I love the artwork here. Isn't it heartbreaking? Yeah. Henry, I was sick too. I was sick and I was scared. But I have people that help me. And you have people that are going to help you too. Okay? Okay. They said you have leukemia. It's... Arr, we have to go. Am I going to die like mom? I'm not going to let that happen to you or your sister. I'm here for you. Oh! What the hell? Get the hell off! They're in the North Wing. What do we do, Haley? I can show. I, I can show you. Now, this is the quickest way out. There might be some soldiers in the hangar. It depends if they're out on scout. I got your suits. I think that and, and they were going to be incinerated. Why are you helping us? I don't know. Just we don't all like the rules here. Let's go. Stay behind me, Tarek. Junkyard Joe! He oh, was cool. real! He was real! Haley, it looks like Junkyard Joe. The comic strip, the cartoon, but scarier. Stay clear! This is going to get bright! Ooh! Tarek, I told you to stay clear! Chink! And look at this. He melts the helmet, but Joe is not melting! Mmm! <laughs> Ugh, it's dampening wrong. Warning, hangar has been breached. That robot broke one. If Tarek doesn't get this one back, he'll explode. You, you're absorbing everything I've got, aren't you? It's stuck. Keep trying. Haley, Rick, your eye, and the air. You need to get back inside. You need help. Haley, it won't. I feel it moving. Shrink. What's the deal, Joe? Why won't you melt, damn it? You're nuclear power, too. That makes us brothers. No need to fight. Tarek, you're on. Kids, get back. Mm -hmm. oh, no. I've never seen it activated before. Our, uh, Joe's been programmed to do what needs to be done, Mr. Vice President. But a story about his creator, true. Every last one of them. You're on, Tarek. Don't lose it. I won't. Stay away from my kids. Oh, Joe, that really you? 
Kid? Oh no! Damn it! Get far away! Rod, gotta. Duh! No! The Rod Tarek? <laughs> Haley, that one broke too! What do we do now? I told you to stay back! Tarek, listen to me! I can't control this. I never could. It's getting really hot. Please go! No! You won't hurt us. We're like a family now. Huh? We're here for you too. Aww. Oh! Now, look at the kid's eye. Think back oh. to the guy who's been telling the story. Oh, yeah! The eye patch! <gasps> what happened? I told you you could do it. Why are you so sad? I'm not Henry. Hey, Ruff! Haley. Christ, Rick, what are you doing out here? Rick, his mother's going to kill us. This kind of exposure. Let's get him in before the general has our asses. Meaning the woman we saw with the scar is his mom. And look, mm. the blood. Ah. Meant to make clear his eye is busted. Yeah. What do we do now? We go, and we don't look back. Ugh. I'm tired again. It's okay. Try and rest. Ah! Uh, Tarek! I won't hurt you. We know you won't. Damn it. What is it? The king. Hold. Yes? Yes, it's him. It's the glowy man. Yippee. Does he have the football? Wait here. Where are you going? To say hi. He's walking towards us. Just walking. Wait. Oh, ho. Is it a challenge? Yes, yes. A challenge for the king's honor. No time for games, kid. We need that backpack. Oh, shut up, buddy. It's Miss Borden to you, you little brat. Hazmat, I appoint you to nuclear night to fight for my glory. But you, I'm not the driver. You are my honor, knight. Now take charge of the war the warship behind us, and no mercy passes and passes. Understand? What's he doing? I don't know. Fight for glory, for Camelot, for me. Destroy the glowy man. Boom! He glows all right. Think my time with you is over, King. You with us, Bonnie? Yep. Let's get out of here, boys. Wait. Come back, you cowards. That was awesome. You should be buckled up. Now, up. But what now? Now they'll let us pass. There's a place. A town with doctors. One of them helped me a long time ago. They don't like me very much, but they can help Henry now. Can they help you? Yeah. Yeah, they can help me too, Henry. Boulder City. One week. Sunset. Call my nuclear knights. Which one, sir? All of them, you idiot! Three days later. You're not welcome back here, Tarek. Nurse Red. We've been told to kill you on sight. You know that. I know. These kids, though. One of them is sick. Kids? What's going on? I have to go. I thought you were going to, and they were going to help you. I know I said that, but they can't. I don't want to go with them. You're safe now. You really are. I'm heart sorry, Henry. This is goodbye. Are you going to be going without us? I'm not going to be without you. I, I, uh, you're different. Not really. Mm. So the Geiger went home. He read his favorite book. He did the dishes. He took the wa down the wall. He buried his family. And he waited until sunset. Glowy man! We are here as requested, fool! Your head is mine. There's nothing here you can hurt. Not anymore. Wait, what's he up? Oh, no. No, God, no. He's retreat. Geiger opened his harp. And he found peace. Yep. And all that happened right here on the spot? Sure did. Like Paul Bunyan, Calamity Jane, and John Henry, Tarek Geiger became a legend. A story about the lengths a man would pretend, went to protect his family. The girl helped and found help. And the kids found help. The girl, she was someone special to me once. But that was the end of the king. The end of Boulder City. And the end of Geiger? The end of Geiger himself? No. Geiger's story was only beginning. Boulder City is gone. Now look at the queen now! Oh boy! And so is my son, the horrible scab. I beg you all for your I beg you all for your forgiveness for his action. They were unsanctioned by me, I assure you. The king stirred the glowing man. 
from his nest, my dear queen. But perhaps that will benefit us all. I'm all ears, Bob. The military wants Tarek Geiger, and we want the West. So what do you say to that, General? Oh, don't, and, and don't you worry, Bob. I'm sure President Griffin is willing to make some kind of arrangement. How about we all discuss this over some pre-war whiskey? Hmm. So? That also, was great. Look at this. 7076, Red Coat becomes immortal. 1864, the Northerner begins its hunt. 1944, the monster is made. 1972, Junkyard Joe comes online. 1997, the American Widow X has her revenge. 2025, the first ghost is captured on film. 2030, the unknown war erupts. Ge uh, 2050, Geiger walks across America. Throughout history, unlikely uh, and strange heroes have risen and fallen. These men and women are a mystery. Their identities and lives a secret. But for a great evil to be stopped, their stories must be told. From a radioactive family man in the near future, to a British assassin during the American Revolution, to a robotic killing machine seeking its creator, and more. They are the unnamed, fighting the unknown war. But we're not done! Oh! We have the 80-page giant! Oh, wow! It continues! Yep! And we open, we get a bunch of small stories. For example, on December 25th, 1776. There's a strip straight to hell, George. Redcoats have the Heisens at their side. Kellwater will get the Brits' attention to the south while Ewing halts their retreat. Well, we go straight in. We'll be outnumbered four to one. You heard the same tales I have. The Heisens cut open a teacher in Trenton and boiled his insides. They fed him to his students. George, we need more men. Remember Payne's word. Tyranny, like hell, is not easily conquered. Yet we have this consult and consolation with us that the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. We don't need more men. We only need face. Face and power! What? Whoa! Okay. George Washington used power? Oh, boy! Huh! October 13th, 2050. As we see, well, turns out he's the immortal, this guy. Huh. He was born on the 13th of July in the year 1749. 1976, uh, 1749, yeah, I met a man named Tom Paine. He wrote a lot of things over his life, inspired a lot of men, including George Washington. Med Washington, too, the devil, he gets all the credit. But without Tom, there would have been no American Revolution. And if there had been no American Revolution... I wouldn't be here at the ripe old age of 301. Not that I look it. My, something smells right good. Oi, anybody need somebody dead? <laughs> so basically, um, he's just talking. Basically, he's an assassin. Makes sense. And he's being asked to go find the glowing man. Ah, uh -huh, there's the link. Yep, I'm an unnatural myself. Things to Washington and his cult, but that, and, but, and what about this man you wish me to end? What of him? The glowing man was caught in the follower of the unknown war. So, yeah, in other words, he's being told to hunt him down. I was part of an army led by the king to destroy him. I alone survived through luck, but now without being riddled with the sickness. Now I'm too weak to face him myself. That monster needs to die. Fascinating story, but, sir, but please, sir, after I eat, we don't want this to get cold now, do we? By chance, my love, might you have some pepper? We discuss business matter first, Mr. Pure. Then you eat. Hey, Redcoat, you should have left Boston. Who's that? Jimmy Stones, you all saw it. What a pleasure it is to see you. Won't you and your friends join me and mine for a drink? You killed my brother for some fish and chips. I'd have done it for biscuits and tea, if I'm being honest. But the important thing, I think, is that you and I both know your brother deserved it. He was a brat and bastard, was he not? He was still my bastard. You kill well enough people, well, their friends and family tend to come looking for you. And not being the stealthiest of lads, I know I'm often found. Preferably, I like to talk my way out of harm. No one gets hurt, though occasionally, I have to fight. And every once in a while, you son of a bitch! Well, shit, I die. If George Washington taught me one thing back in Trenton on Christmas, 
Boom! Um, we got him, Simon. You got General Washington. He said, dying is temporary. My yings will be ringing all day. But if you belong to the right club, bloody hell! Huh? Interesting! Yeah! Yeah, now we haven't seen this story yet. Huh, well, I'd be interested to see when that comes around. Oh, we find out? How did um, Geiger find Barney? Reddit, 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 Reddit. I won't be long. He's heading to the library to get some more books. Uh, it's, the poor dog doesn't make it, but... Yeah, life sucks. Good luck. Don't look at me. You're on your own. I used to have a dog. Real good one. So you've got a lot to live up to, you understand? Aww. Oh. Where'd he get Barney? He got him in the library. Oh. The glowing man found his dog in the library? Makes as much sense as anything else. Geiger's quite the bibliophile, and bl bibliophile, so his hunt for books took him far and wide to a great many places where he met a great many people, friends and foes both. I'd like to know more about Vegas since you're so intent on driving around it. I'm assuming it didn't get much better after Geiger nuked the king. Hard to say what you hear that comes out of Vegas. Well, the tales are few and far between. I've heard even that, and with that witch, the queen in charge, Camelot isn't that mo isn't the most dangerous of casinos. You've got a fighting chance at Nero's. Safari still has the hunt sinks the Safari Bob. You risk it all to enter the Karloff. Then there's the other, uh, like Goldbeard, where it's said and the odds are more balanced. The pirates? Pirates, yes. But they have some kind of code that trickles down from their captain. Then there's also the Manhattan, where loyalty still exists thanks to the women running the show, Bonnie Borden. Some say she's a descendant of Al Capone herself. That true? I've heard crazier. There are smaller houses, too, that rotate hands. The Circus, Big Top, and Standard 7. Word is that's under new management. And don't listen to what I've heard or been told. Because when it comes to the warlords of Vegas, you never really know what's true and what's just a story. And this is at some time after the bomb. Basically, yeah, we see, basically, this is the origin of Safari Bob. Turns out there was another Safari guy beforehand. And he taught this guy so much well and so much to do and it put him on these uh, safaris. And he would be the one who would survive against everyone until he made his way back to him and kill and took out Safari Bill. Hmm. And then he took over because he's that damn good of a survivor. So, what, and what do you think about that for him? Huh. That's pretty neat. Sorry, I got distracted because trouble was pawing huh. at the door. Yep, then we have the Karloff. Just a nice story with monster monsters in there. Oh, seriously, what are you seeing about this world that Jeff Johns has created? It's really fascinating. He put a lot of thought into all this. Yeah, and there's a lot of different colorful characters that I haven't really seen the likes of in quite the same way before. Good and bad. Yeah. Yeah, there's Nero. Oh, this one, the guy he sends to attack, that's his mother. Oh, boy. But he didn't know until she died. Oh, that's rough. Yep. Uh, uh yeah. Oh, before we find out with um, Goldbeard, you see this guy with his father trying to find Goldbeard's treasure. But we later find out, uh, yeah, he's, his dad's suffering from dementia. And every once in a while, they keep on restarting everything just so we can discover this treasure that never really existed. Hmm. How is it? That just tells you that Goldbeard's a nice guy in the end. Yeah. Or we see public enemy number one, where we see um, Bonnie and everything taking one of these women with him and with her out out into the desert, and it looks like they're doing they're gathering something, 
Oh, look at that. It looks very much like Al Capone, doesn't she? Mm-hmm. But yeah, the real security is knowing who you can trust. Did you know, Noodles? I swear, Bonnie, I didn't know. It was Joey. He told them. I found out afterwards. I didn't tell anyone where the still was. I never do that to you, Bonnie, I swear. I'm sorry, Noodles. You should have told me. It is what it is. I won't leave you to the radiation or the organ people. I'll do it myself quickly. Thanks, Bonnie. Boop! Basically, they, they were trying to steal the still, which is where they get their liquor from. Oh, boy. What's your name again? Again, Karen? Never mind. You got a baby face. I'll call you baby face from now on. Get in the car. You work for me now. Or we see um, this one, you know, the one woman um, who's the, the, uh, the that one of the other women there who's taken over as a warlord. And she is apparently um, related to some uh, to someone, um, or to George, George, wait a minute. Yeah, George Flint, the man who designed and built the Saturn Seven. Hmm. And she takes over it. Oh boy. Yep. Space gangs. And she thinks she's in love with the glowing man. Ah. So yeah, but that's not all we've gone over. The next one I'm just going to skim through. I'm not going to go over them. Give me a moment. All right, so I'm not going to go over. I'm just going to show you off some of the other stuff that Jeff has done. For example, Junkyard Joe has his own series as we find out how he came about. Hmm. 1972. It's very much a Vietnam-type story. And, oh, boy, that guy got shot in the face. Yep. But when, yeah, when we see Joe, he's for the most part looking, uh, he looked normal until he took a grenade. And now they see what he is. Oh, but here's boy. the thing about Joe. He's learning. He's understanding them. And as time goes on, he actually befriends them. Oh, that's cool. But eventually they reach a point where they're given bad orders. And he's told to take out normal, innocent people. But he won't. And then he shuts himself down. Which is what leads to Nixon realizing they have to get out of Nam. Huh, that's an interesting detail of continuity. Mm-hmm. Ah, jeez. What the heck? I don't know why that happened. But I don't need to show much further than that. But um, and then there's one more, one that I did not realize was a um, was a um, was part of it until recently. And oh, that's interesting. The blizzard. Ooh. Uh, do you remember that old, the old one way back when, that one father who killed his son's killer? Hey. You know, the one who, that one bit where the guy's waiting at a phone, waiting for the killer to walk by, and he just walked up and shot him? Huh. It was I way back in the 80s. Detail. It was way back in the 80s. Well, we get someone who was similar, but things don't go well for the father. Oh, no. He's arrested. And it's put in the jail because it's not the same as what happened before. And then eventually he with the the truck he's been on the um the bus he's been on gets stuck in a blizzard that's full of monsters. I'm just showing you the artwork more than anything. But yeah, look at all this. People are getting picked off one by one, showing their worst fear the people who have they like all their different crimes they've done. Mm. While they're trying to survive the cold as well. Yeah. Now, if you notice, we don't see anything that indicates that it's part of the Geiger universe, but eventually we do. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Wow. Yeah. There's a bunch of short stories, of course. You know, shorts building up on it. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. Now we eventually see Tales of the Unnamed. Oh, boy. So, yeah, overall, what did you think about all this? I really, really like it. It's something, feels something fresh and original. This whole universe he created. Yeah. 
was and, like what and now what would you and what did you like best about Geiger? Hmm. I always like that dichotomy of something that is simultaneously larger than life and down to earth at the same time. Because it's just like you get introduced to this guy as the, having this massive reputation, and then you actually spend get to spend a lot of time with them over the course of the story and sort of realize, hey, it's just some guy. Just some guy who would probably have done the same thing. I, who, who, if I were in his position, I probably wouldn't have acted too differently. Yep, and I, I agree with that. And but what did you think about the twist, the cruel twist? Ah. And just it's really wow. hard to know what to say about it because it worked really, really well. It's yep, something that's much. perfectly plausible. Usable and just was a great way to sort of see, okay, what are you going to do now? Are you going to implode? Or are you going to, as it turns out, hey, you're my kids now. Adoption is a coping mechanism. Yep. But then the stuff with um, Henry, that was heartbreaking. Yeah, and that also felt really real since it's like, that's not even something that's too much of an exaggeration. I mean, with COVID, when things were, like, sort of... Dur during some of the phases of the epidemic, there was sort of, like, real concerns that, like, with the hospitals filling up, that there were, like, people with various disabilities who were sort of involuntarily given do-not-resuscitate orders, which is really, really shitty. I don't think I have to tell you that. It's like, right. that just hit way too close to home. Definitely, definitely. And um, what did you think about this whole idea of the unnamed? I like it because I feel like that's how a lot of actual, of where the actual heroes in the world end up existing. Like From wars and all that, war stories and all that. Mm-hmm. And like, it's usually not the people who are big and shiny at the immediate moment who end up really making the marks, or at least making marks that are worth remembering. It's the people on the fringes who are just living their lives and suddenly have to deal with extraordinary situations and sometimes become extraordinary to rise up and meet it. There's a lot mm -hmm. of people who like to think of themselves as big shots kind of presume that extraordinariness to like the king yeah and then ends up eating shit for it essentially or getting his face burnt yeah and what would you say what well, and the artwork though like i said you love the artwork didn't you oh i loved the artwork a lot it had a lot of colors it had a lot of contrast. It was had a lot of really good composition. Frick, I'm envious of those lighting effects. Those lighting effects were really, really good. Great coloring by Brand and Brad Anderson. Mm-hmm. And um Because it's just like you don't commonly see a lot of colors when you're talking about a post-apocalyptic setting. It's really easy to sink into just having a lot of muted gray grays. A's and maybe some scrubby green or blue in there, but no, it's mm -hmm. real, it's vibrant, it's bright. There are a lot of colors everywhere, and I feel like it's sort of like, hey, we're going to deal with the apocalypse by painting everything bright. And what did you think about, um, 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 hold on, I had it, I had it. Oh, what did you think about with how so much stuff got set up? Like, if you notice. That news report at the very beginning, it mentioned stuff like the widow bombs or the creator of um, Junkyard Joel that you realize so much of the stuff connected to the other name and name unnamed were set up in the first issue. I mean, I got to re got to respect somebody that has an almost insane attention to detail in ways that. They're not expecting anyone else to care about but them. <laughs> and then there's that, like, 5% of the audience that do notice those details. Like, you don't have to notice them in order to be able to get the gist of what the unnamed is. But 
once you do notice they're there, it's like, wait, this is brilliant. I love stuff like that. Because it yep. feels like too often and more like streamlined mainstream stuff. They are so very terribly worried that no one is going to get all of their brilliant stuff. So then they have to spell it out in painful detail, spoon feeding it to the viewers and not necessarily trusting them to get things on their own because they're appealing to the lowest common denominator. This guy is making something unique. I can tell that this has the markings of a passion project all over it, and it is very <laughs> well executed. And as one world builder to another, I tip my hat. Yep. And um, now, what did you think about Junkyard Joe? Just how we set him up and we find out what he is. It is a textbook brilliant case of Chekhov's gag. Something that's initially introduced as a joke and then ends up having plot relevance later. Yeah, because the first thing like, oh, he's a comic, he's a cartoon character, nothing more. And like, now we find hey, out, oh, shit, he's real. Yeah, it's it initially set up as an in-universe comic strip, but it's not unbelievable because we're already set up with somebody sharing the story of a living legend. So it's not so implausible that something else that just seems to be a story could be real. Uh, oh, by the way, I should point out, you want to know how much the trade is? Oh, boy. Nine ninety nine. Oh, man. That, that means in other words, they're willing to take a hit to make sure people are willing to buy it. Oh, man. Well, I hope is, this does really well. Because that's cheaper then all of the books, you know, individual issues. Hmm. So if you want to get your own copy, you can order it right now on um, Amazon. I suppose I could, and I might just have to, because I'd love to see more of this stuff like now, this getting produced. Put my money where my page, mouth is. You'd have to get the AD page giant separate, which itself is $9.99. Yeah, I'll certainly put those on my list of considerations. It's like, I would rather put my money into the pockets of creators who are trying to do something interesting rather than just make numbers go up in some corporation's pocket. Exactly. <laughs> and, oh boy, just, and again, stuff like the, um, the red coat. I'm, I am so curious on the red coat. Yeah, the red coat looks freaking fascinating. Like somebody who is an immortal who got that way from the period of the Civil War. There's so from much Washington you could do himself. It. Yeah. And that, 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 how did that, Washington die, though? That's the big question. Yeah, I would really like to see more of the red coat because there is like a thousand different ways you could explore that character, and all of them are potentially interesting. Definitely. Definitely. Well, anything else you want to talk about with this? Anything else you want to bring up? No, not really. I think I've said my piece here. Okay, then. Well, Thank you for joining me on this one, Ingrid. Thank you, everyone else, for watching, and we'll see you all in the next one. Take care. Bye.